I'm Mr. Jackson, and Chief Meteorologist David Hecker. You may have noticed the summer has been just a little bit, well, odd. Yes, we have the storms. Yes, we have the heat. But how everything has kind of played out has been very peculiar. We've had steady rainfall that's set up throughout the morning hours, especially south of the Jacksonville area. We've had sea breezes that really can't get much past the intercoastal. And, of course, we've had the heat. We're used to it, but temperatures have soared all the way into the mid to even upper 80. So what exactly is going on here? Well, let's talk about a couple key things. First off is this persistent southwesterly wind we've had literally for weeks. This is what we call a southwest flow. Sometimes you hear it being called an onshore flow or offshore flow. The reason it's called an offshore flow is because the winds are coming from the land away from the Atlantic waters. We normally talk about more of a light easterly flow developing, especially as we get into the afternoons as the sea breeze develops. And the southwesterly flow is doing two things. One, it's taking moisture from the Big Bend region of the Gulf of Mexico and pushing it into our direction. That's why a lot of times in the even early to mid-morning hours, cities like Gainesville, Stark, Palatka, you've been seeing some early to mid-morning rainfall, and it continues to impact much of the region, especially in the parts of northeast Florida. But the second thing it does is it really affects the sea breezes. Normally, the sea breezes try to move all the way well inland, which oftentimes means some of the more significant thunderstorms is right along the I-75 corridor between I-75 and US-301. Because we have this steady onshore flow or offshore flow, the sea breezes really can't penetrate very far into the region. In fact, on some days when we have very strong southwesterly winds, these sea breezes can't get much past the intercoastal or US-1. That is resulting in much warmer temperatures in inland areas and also resulting in the bigger complex of showers and storms lining up right along US-1 or the I-95 corridor, including here in Jacksonville. Second big thing we need to talk about is what we call the Bermuda High. You've heard this quite a bit. This is a large area of a high pressure that really dominates much of the Atlantic waters and southeastern United States. This is what the Bermuda High normally looks like in a typical year. It takes full control of our weather and really doesn't allow anything from the west to penetrate southeast Georgia and the Florida region. But watch what's happening this year. The Bermuda High is significantly weaker. You can see it really only extends out towards the Bahamas. And what that's doing is it's allowing the heat in the southwest in Texas to begin to kind of nudge its way westward. It's already happened once. It will likely happen again in the next several days. So these two combinations have been really critical to why the summer's played out the way it has. Lastly, we have very warm water temperatures. So some of our coastal communities, even the, the ones that are right along the beaches, are seeing temperatures in the morning only dipping down into say the mid to upper 70s compared to low 70s. Again, a byproduct of the fact the water temperatures have been so warm. So bottom line, it has been kind of a peculiar summer. It looks like that's going to continue at least through July and possibly heading into August. Mrs. Chief Meteorologist David Eckert for Channel 4, The Local Station.